You may have heard not to put sunscreen on your infant. So we're gonna take this week to dive into sun exposure for infants and children, how to keep your kids safe, what you should be doing as a parent, um, and more all about sun this week. If this is your first time to our channel and meeting us, I'm Sarah. I'm a board certified OBGYN and mom to three from age baby to four. Yep, and I'm Kurt. I'm a board certified pediatrician, dad to those same three. And, and we, we are, are the, the Doctors, doctors Bjorkman. Bjorkman. As we mentioned, this episode is all about the sun, sunburn, sunscreen, and at the end of the day, how do you do what is best for your children this summer? And as I'm sure you have experienced, there's a lot of different information about this. You know, is sunscreen okay for babies? How dangerous is the sun anyway? Don't we need sun exposure for vitamin D production and other needs for our bodies? Yeah, it can absolutely be confusing, which is why we're going to dive into some of the research and nitty-gritty details up front and then share the actual recommendations about best protecting your kids from the sun. Why you may have been told not to put sunscreen on your baby and why that advice while well-intentioned can be completely wrong yes and as always stick through to the end of this episode to hear about how we are handling this for our own toddlers and baby this summer Now, many of us grew up getting a little sunburn here and there, um, but we know that just one bad sunburn during childhood nearly doubles the risk of developing skin cancer or melanoma later in life. Um, with the risk from a sunburn early in childhood yeah. being greatest, but there's also continued increased risk of cancer from sunburns later in life as well. It, exactly. And kids' skin is thinner and more sensitive than adults, but there's also an additive and building risk from lifetime UV exposure, mm -hmm. meaning that chronic sun exposure over the course of your life also plays a role in increasing the risk of cancer with every sunburn or even suntan throughout life. Yeah. Now, while some sun exposure is most certainly helpful in terms of things like helping our bodies make vitamin D, which we've talked about recently too, mm -hmm. um, there is most certainly a thing as too much sun, yep. both from those intermittent sunburns, but also from those chronic long-term exposures. Right. So rates of skin cancer have been increasing worldwide over the last 50 years, which can be confusing because it seems like there's so much attention mm -hmm. paid to sun exposure and sunscreen use. But as it turns out, sunscreen use for almost all of us is far from being good, as good as we need. Um, and so inadequately using sunscreen often can be associated with overconfidence in being out in the sun. So you stay out in the sun longer than you should be uncovered without reapplying sunscreen because we think we're safe from these sunburns. And yeah. it actually causes more issues. Yeah, and as like culture has changed and like the thought of like, hey, a suntan looks good or like maybe right. we're getting more of these intermittent sunburns there's lots of things that are playing into these increased risks which is why we're spending so much time on sun and sunscreen today yeah. so what is actually happening with sun exposure yeah so in those times when we aren't protected from the sun those ultraviolet those uv rays from the sun are penetrating the skin and there's two kinds of uv rays that we're going to talk about uva okay. and uvb UVA rays interact with the skin. They can damage the proteins and the membranes of the skin cells and the DNA itself. Um, the photons, the light rays from UVB rays are also absorbed by the DNA in the skin itself. And that extra energy from those sun rays can cause the DNA to link up incorrectly. The body does have ways to actually repair some of this DNA damage, but that DNA damage is a big part of what increases the risk of skin cancer. Yeah, and it's the injury to the proteins and membranes of the skin cells that leads to all that discomfort from the sunburn okay. as the body works to heal your skin after. Interestingly, it's the DNA damage that also signals the skin cells to produce melanin, which is what gives your skin that tan color after the redness fades. Yeah, and this melanin and a healthy tan does absolutely shield from future UV exposure to some extent, but don't rely on your tan to fully protect you from the damages of those UV rays because it's only protective as about an SPF2 sunscreen. So that base tan does not really protect you from Definitely skin. not completely, no. Okay. This brings us to sunscreen. How does it work? Does it work? And is it okay to put it on my baby or my little kids? Yeah, and so the big question is here, does sunscreen prevent sunburn? Absolutely. We've got data to show that using sunburn blocks those damaging ultraviolet rays sure. and can protect from sunburn. Um, but the big thing is we want to say, like, hey, does it actually help prevent cancer? And the data is mixed. Yeah. 
Um, it's mostly because it's hard to study, right? Um, how do you do like a life term, lifetime chronic exposure and reducing that to say like, oh, it's actually decreased right. risk of cancer. Mm -hmm. um, in the studies that are mixed, a lot of what they see is that the sunscreen use and those who use sunscreen are also in the sun more often right. or in the sun longer or both. Mm -hmm. And so there's lots of confounders. So yes, they're using sunscreen, but they're also getting higher doses, longer doses of sun. And, and so some of the benefit is kind of washed out between groups. Right. Um, things that we did see in these studies is that using higher SPF, so SPF 30 or above actually makes a difference as compared to using lower SPF sunscreens. Um, and then in the one randomized control trial in humans, uh, looking at uh, people in Australia actually did show a reduced risk of melanoma, that's skin cancer, in those who use sunscreen every day yes. as compared to just discretionary use here and there. So regular use, can make a difference in terms of decreasing cancer risk, okay. um, yep. but we don't have a ton of data to support that. A lot of this is, hey, we really think this makes a difference and we can show that blocking those damaging UV rays can at least prevent some of that damage in the short term. And um, it makes physiologic sense. Yep. Yep. So, um, but it really shows that, hey, we need to do better about using it regularly or just protecting ourselves from the sun yes. in other ways. Yeah. Okay, that was a lot, but it sounds like the basics are avoid sunburns and also be thoughtful about chronic long-term exposures too. Yes, absolutely. No matter the age, sunburns can increase your risk of skin cancer. A little sun is good for us, but those big doses or even small doses, if frequent and chronic enough, can lead to problems in the long run. And so this finally brings us to the what should you actually do for your kids in the sun this summer? Yeah, so let's break this down by age. Now, the American Academy of Pediatrics, the AAP, and the American Academy of Dermatology are really clear on this. For baby under six months of age, mm -hmm. keep them out of direct sunlight. Their skin is so sensitive at this age, mm -hmm. both to that injury from ultraviolet radiation and also they just had a much higher risk of dehydration. Um, so keep them safe, keep them covered and shaded. So this means things like wide brim hats, a lightweight long sleeve shirts, just cover that skin um, or using a stroller with a sunshade or a clip-on or umbrella, something like that. But since you also need to live your life, um, you may have other children, there may likely be times when there is no good way to avoid sun exposure completely. For example, you're at the beach with your toddlers. You've got an umbrella, but you, those little feet might get out or those little hands. It is okay to use sunscreen on small exposed areas like the hands or feet. You want to look for mineral-based options with zinc oxide or titanium dioxide. Yep, these are the things that are safest for that baby's skin. Yep, because um, they don't absorb. Yep, it's just gonna sit on top of the skin to protect. Yep. It really just puts a film, a layer to protect from those ultraviolet radiation rays. Once your child is six months of age or older, yeah. sunscreen should become an essential part of your daily routine in summertime. Yes, you're gonna to wanna to look for broad spectrum SPF 30 or higher and apply it generously before you go outside. Yep, yeah. and here's the kicker. You've got to reapply every two hours. So after swimming, yep. sweating, even if it says water resistant. We love the mineral-based ones for sensitive skin. And if your toddler hates lotion, don't they all? Um, you can try a stick sunscreen for the face or even a spray. Um, we try to keep spray like lower body so yep. they're not inhaling it, um, but you have to make sure you rub that in to make sure it's doing full coverage. Yep. And then also just remember the peak sun hour rule. So from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., the UV index is highest. Yep. So if you can plan your outside activities either in the mornings or late afternoons, they're just at less risk of UV rays because those UV rays are not nearly as intense kind of at those different hours of day. Now, again, when it comes to protecting yourself from the sun, it's best to just avoid the sun rather than having to rely on sunscreen. Yes, yeah, so clothing is gonna be your first line of defense. Lightweight UPF rated clothing is amazing. You can find swimwear, shirts, hats um, that block UV rays. Yeah, and don't forget sunglasses too. You can look for ones that are 100% UVA and UVB protection. Mm -hmm. Kids' eyes are also more vulnerable to UV damage than those of older children and adults. Indeed, so things we love wide brimmed hats that have a chin strap to stay on for the little toddlers. Um, baseball hats are so cute, yes. um, but they don't cover their toss their little ears or the back of their neck, and those are tough spots for sunburn. 
Okay, we can't talk about sun safety without just talking about hydration and heat safety too. Yep. When out in the sun, don't forget about hydration. Yep. Kids are at a higher risk of dehydration and heat illness. Yeah, they just get so busy and it's so hot. So offer water often, even if they aren't asking. They forget about their water bottles because they're building a sandcastle. Um, for babies that are under six months of age who are exclusively breastfed or formula fed, they don't need extra water. You don't need to be giving Pure water. water. Don't give straight water. To babies under six months old. Um, but do offer the breast or bottle more often when it's hot out and you're out and about. Yeah. And also watch for signs of heat exhaustion. So in those babies, it could just be that they're extra fussy, they're red hot skin. Um, and in babies, in toddlers, extra fatigue, um, going to the bathroom less often, fewer wet diapers in those infants. Yep. Hey, so happy summer. Yes. Um, we're out and about a bit more. Um, sunscreen is always a little tricky just because it's got to be, it's got to be part of your routine. Yeah, totally. And sometimes it is, it's one of those toddler battles sometimes. Like it's a sensory thing in terms of like putting a liquid goop or just on, their being face. on their face. But like anything, just, yeah. I think what we've seen is the more we do it, the easier it is for everyone. The more it becomes part of routine. Like, hey, we're going yeah. outside. Let's make sure your ears, face, and like open areas are covered with sunscreen. Yep. Um, other things. Some little tips, things to think about. Um, to make it easier. So one, if you know it's gonna be a battle, you get to the park, you get to a splash pad, you get to the beach, you can. Put that sunscreen on while they're still in the car seat. While they're buckled, put it yeah. on while they're buckled, get their legs, get as much as you can while they're buckled in. Um, so that's one option. Yeah. Um, reapplying is like easy to forget too. Set yourself totally. a timer, a reminder. Phone alarm. Remind each other. Yep, phone alarm for two hours or hey they got out of the water we need to do this again um to make sure you're reapplying frequently yeah. um, um and i think modeling really helps too like even just like hey them seeing you putting on sunscreen put like, on a sunscreen I, mom and dad are both wearing hats um they've got sunglasses on like this is just this is what we wear at the beach when we got out of the car at the beach this weekend cease was like we need our sunscreen on it's yeah. just become a habit so yeah. it's a thing it um, Special tips for your waving around this makeup brush. Which has so much sand in it. Um, <laughs> sometimes... Bo was painting the beach. He was. Using this for, for face, like to put this on their face or their body, sometimes doing something different and fun and exciting can also help too. Yeah, Bo um, loves this. She's just like, no, don't get that near my face. Just use your hands. Just so. smush it on my um, face. Whatever works for your kids. It's like kind of a fun like thing. Yes. But again... The biggest thing is routine, like, hey, we're getting out, we're ready, it's time to be on the beach, let's do sunscreen, and yeah. just making it part of your routine. And I think it, the the sun safety changes as, as your kids grow with, like, with Cease. Okay, our first baby, stay out of the sun, keep her in the shade. Fine, like, that's just what we did, because we could. As you have toddlers who want to go and do things and be at a splash pad or go to the beach, like... The baby gets pulled along for a toddler and big kid activities, right. and so, like... Hank may not be 100% shaded all the time, so that little buddy is going to get some sunscreen put on his hands and anything that might be exposed. Yeah, um, and so there's definitely that, that comment of, like, hey, don't put sunscreen on your infants less than six months. Like, what is that about? Well, that's really about, hey, they shouldn't be in any sun at all. Right. Um, um, and so like for dehydration but, and their little thin skin. Yeah. yeah. And so like, you know, if they're going to be in the sun, put sunscreen on. Them. Right. 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 And so it's like way hey, better than a summer. Yep. So the no sunscreen for less than six months old is just no sun. So they really don't need sunscreen if they're not in the sun at all. But right. life is going to happen, life especially happens. if you've got big kids. So use a mineral based sunscreen for your infants, yep. like on those exposed areas and just keep them covered. Like you don't need your baby naked on the beach. They don't need a tan. Right. The other thing. Oh, that I think about sometimes is like when you're at the beach, if you have your baby in something like a carrier, a stroller, something, and you're like, I'm going to block them from the sun. I am going to put a blanket oh, over yeah. their car seat or over their um, stroller seat. You know, this seems like you're doing the right thing, shielding them from the sun. It is not the right thing. Well, it needs to be open to air. It right. has to be. If you put a blanket over it and it heats up in there like an oven, even if it is a thin blanket, whatever, don't do that. Yeah. Um, and so, so use it as a shade, but like don't like fully enclose and cover whatever structure right, they're in. Right, right. So those are my sun safety tips. Lots of water. Um, 
yeah, just stay hydrated and protect yourself from the sun as you can. And honestly, like, have fun. Summer's yes, great. Summer's like, be great. active. Get outside. Like, be active. It's a wonderful time. I tell my patients all the time, the best thing we can do for our kids is teach them to be active, live active lifestyles. Let them see their parents as healthy, active, exercising people so that they learn that, hey, like, life is active. It's what our bodies need. So. Yes. And then, you know. Watch yourself when you go to use your makeup brush. It Thanks might be uh, yeah. full of sand. Okay. So hopefully these tips have been helpful and give you some ideas on how to keep your kiddos safe from the sun in the summer. Um, we want summer to be full of memories, not bad sunburns. And a little planning can go a long way in keeping your kids safe. Yes, the biggest thing is just avoid the sun when possible, cover up, and use sunscreen when you're going to be out in the sun and exposed. If this episode helped you, please like and subscribe. Share it with someone else who you think might need an extra reminder to cover up before hitting the splash pad this summer. Indeed. Stay safe, stay in the shade, and we will see you all next week. Bye, guys. We're doctors. But not your doctors. Anything we've said in this video is for education or entertainment purposes only. It is not medical advice. Any specific medical questions you have should be directed to your provider.